episode today, we have a Hughescraft Sportsman 200. This was made in 2000, it's a 2019 model, the 2019 Yamaha 115 horsepower, which is a great motor for this particular size boat, uh, where most of them are getting a 90. Um, we'll start at the front on the outside. We'll go down through the boat, look at all the options that this one has specific to it. And as well as Hughescraft obviously has a lot of information on that. This boat is still pretty much the identical one that's in production right now. And so that should be available to you. Um, it does have a backdrop, before I forget, it does have a backdrop on it. Everything's good there. We just don't have it on there at this point right now. Um, but this thing's got some goodies. This thing's got a lot of goodies actually. So it's gonna make up for a nice boat. First off, going on there, we got a two inch ball at the front with the, uh, this one does have a uh, full round seven plug for it, but it's not brakes. So you can use that one. Uh, pretty much most trucks now will have that. It does have a swing away tongue right here. And this is a welded in one. This one's not the bolt in one. So it actually sits level. If you look at the bolt in ones, a lot of times they'll drop down. This one sits nice and level. Um, and then you got the bolt on stanchion and then you've got a two speed uh, Fulton, um, Fulton stanchion slash winch. And this is really cool because you can really crank the boat down on there good when you when you need it you just pull this handle out and then it'll go into low gear and then you push it in it's in fast speed okay and then you put it into neutral by just pulling that and switching it and then uh, we've got a Fulton uh, swing away uh, jack on the front now one option that this boat has that many of the uh, the Hughescraft Sportsman don't have is it has the diamond plate bow shield here on the front and then as you probably already noticed in the video, this thing's already set up and batteried and everything with an onboard charger for this Minn Kota Ultera uh, auto launching um, remote control bow mount trolling motor. These things are insane for fishing. Like I'm almost to the point where I won't even fish a boat that doesn't have a bow mount trolling motor and this has got the Ultera. So that one is the auto deploy, which will go up and down. We'll see it in the video when we put this boat on the water here in a few minutes. Uh, this puck is just for that. It's Bluetooth connected and it's for the, it's the directional uh, direction sensor on it. Um, LED side marker light or uh, navigation lights. And then we've got pretty darn straight hull. This doesn't really have any dings or nicks in it anywhere. Uh, I'll show you a couple of little spots where there are some damage this boat is used so it's going to have some stuff on it that needs to be well you know that's not going to be as good as brand new but man you save a lot of money over a brand new one so you've already got the the uh, shakespeare antenna pulled down uh vhf and that hooks up we'll see it in a minute that's a gps vhf too so it'll have that uh we've got a little dirt on here but um but this is a vinyl wrap. Um, you can see this is original here. There's a couple of little nicks in it here and there from a crab pot or something coming up the side. But I mean, they're almost not visible at all. So they're tiny. Um, so you got that and then a few, few dings here in the back. Looks like some, some uh, docks, uh, dock bumps here. But you have to be really close to see those like you are right now with the camera. Um, Heavy duty cleats on these, which are rad. Obviously had the down rotor, rotor, <laughs> downrigger holder mounts and the handlebars that go with it, the grips. Those are awesome when you're on the water, you need somewhere to hang on. That's gonna give you something right there, especially when you're working in the back. Okay, so we've got that going down the side here. We'll give you a good view. It's got the sand, standard easy loader trailer. Uh, it's got some, some sand, uh, sandal wheels, brand new tires. Uh, so you're good that way. The other ones didn't wear out. We just thought these were cooler, so we put them on it. And then you also have uh, the LED, the LED lights, sides, fronts, all around the marker lights. The motor itself has a trolling plate on it here. So it does. Now, a lot of times when you see these trolling plates, you're like, oh, shoot, that thing's going to have a ton of hours. This motor only has 88 hours on it. So it's 88 hour motor, so it's not even to its first maintenance. I mean, it's got the break-in maintenance done, but it's not even to its first maintenance at 125 hours after that. So that's pretty sweet. Um, uh, it's got uh, uh, a nice Garmin. We'll look at that here in a second. And the transducers mount in the back. It's already set up with anodes on it on the back here. You can see a little bit of dock rash here on this back corner. It's kind of common for all those. And if you look here, there's a little piece of vinyl put over this spot right here. 
But man, you can't see it unless you're looking really hard. So that one's a, that one's a good one there. Um, it's got the uh, Canon Mag 5 downrigger, electric downriggers. These things are bad to the bone for, for fishing. These are a great downrigger, uh, my favorite personally. This is a local boat that we have got in Florence. Uh, there's a couple of little scrapes here. If you look closely, you can see a couple of scratches on the hole there. And this boat I know was under cover. However, it was only under cover, so you will get some of the salt air type, um, uh, I don't know, you know, I guess you can call it some corrosion, but you can see on the snaps here and stuff like that, it's got a little bit, they're not, they're not like brand new. They have this little bit of that, that uh, salt air stuff that gets on them. And so you've got that, but, and there's a little bit of rust on this Galvi trailer here around these bolts where you have the different metals. So you can see that there too but it's all, it's all pretty minimal. It is, like I said, a 2019, so it obviously can't be in too rough a shape, but, but I just want to be full disclosure on everything so you know the boat um, and you can feel confident when you want to grab it. All right, oh, nice thing that they have on this boat that these uh, sportsmen don't come with too often. This was more of a, this one was ordered up pretty hooked up, but this one's got the swim step and the ladder. My buddy today has the same boat and he was like, hey, I jumped in my out of the boat one time and I couldn't get back in. And I'm like, yeah, you gotta have a ladder. So he's like, I bought one of the little attached ones. This one's awesome. It's got the loading ladder. So if you wanna do some water sports or things, then that works out really good that, or if you just fall out of the boat, you can get back in it, um, which is kind of one of those things you never really think about, but you can't get back in a boat hardly if it doesn't have any way to get a ladder to get in. Uh, let's pull off this motor cowling and check underneath the motor. So you can take a little peek over there. Everything looks brand new. Super clean. And that ought to move this boat out great. Put that back on here. Now, let's go ahead and we'll test the downriggers on the water. This boat down here has a, a switch underneath here for the battery. It is a single battery but it has a two battery switch. So if you wanted to add another battery right here, that's totally possible. In this place, we don't need it. We also have the, uh, the uh, bow mount too, uh, batteries. So I guess you could run an extension or something. But anyways, there's your battery setup, fuel water separator here, and battery and, and switches, as well as like your wash down pump. Oh, it has wash down too. So this one right here, we'll test it on the water, but that right there is wash down pump where it sucks water up out of the lake and you can hose stuff down and we've got uh let's see i like the tops so these tops on the hughes craft are awesome uh they have they have good clearance i'm six one i cannot walk under it straight but it's not much of a bend at all you get down we've got dual fire extinguishers one on each side as well as it doesn't have the big seats it has the little seats because it's great because the other seats are only this big and unless you're sitting next to your honey, it really doesn't help out too much because two dudes can hardly sit on those and they take up a lot more room. However, these ones are skinnier, keeps you out. Look at the size of this deck. This thing is ridiculous. Look how, how much room. There are like four steps to get across. Like I'm like have to be like, man, I gotta walk to the back of the boat. Are you kidding me? Look at that workspace back here. So for fishing, crabbing, whatever you need to do, heck yes. This thing's got the room. Also, deck couple deck chairs if you want more people on board. A couple of deck chairs will do it if you're into fishing specifically. Plus, you know, you really don't need it. There's no reason that you can't sit back here when you're fishing as well. Like these are great little spots. They also give you somewhere to step on the way in. So they utilize the space of the well. Most boats will have the well go all the way across. That that space is toast, gone. Um, unless you want to put a cooler in something, this will, will work for both. So you can step on it, you can walk in there and get it. It comes with uh, uh, Scotty rod holders too. You can see the mounts here as well. There's a little bit of inside storage. It's got the, uh, the uh, uh, anchor light down below there. And as you can see here for in the front, we've got a glove box so that we can keep all of our goodies. The remote for the, for the uh, Ulterra. And then we've got the charger right here for onboard charger. And then right here, we've got our We've got the batteries mounted right there. So those are 
uh, DECA Marine Masters, um, Deep Cycles, uh, Group 24s. So that will do pretty good for us that way. Um, coming up to the helm here, turn the key on. You can get your hour show here. Um, we've got 89 hours on here and it's got the trim indicator. So it's got the, the Yamaha multi-tack. There's a little bit of water on here because we were just spraying things out. Um, fuel gauge here, 12 volts, uh, 12 volt plug here. And then you've got other stuff that you don't even have necessarily. It does have a wiper on the, on the um, port or on the, on the uh, starboard side. And then we've got the, uh, the bilge wiper, anchor nav lights, and then live well, but this does not have a live well, I'm almost positive because they use the same dashes on all of them, horn and accessories here. So that's with that on. We've got a Cobra, like I said, it's a GPS model. So this one right here, when you put your MMSI number in it, then you can basically fire off this thing, hit this distress button, and the Coast Guard will come and get you. Also up front here, we have, what is this? A 74 CV touchscreen Garmin. This is, uh, looks like a current model on here. So this should be pretty awesome and that will have ocean maps on it i believe if it's a 74 cv if it was a 73 then it would have lakes i believe this is your ocean oh, yep 74 cv uh, uhd as well so that is a uhd so this is a new model that just came out so this is not even the original of the boat this is an updated uh, vhf on here that's cool okay um, cable steering on this Handles up here to grab, reverse mirror so you can watch out behind you, but you always have somewhere to grab on here. The nice thing about, I like about the Hughes Craft is, is you can unzip here and here and open this and fold it back. That's what that is for that right there. Maybe I'll show you here. So, because it is a little bit warm out here anyways. So take that and you fold this back like that, as well as look at this. You can grab your fender and pull it in so you're not a geek driving down the driving down the river with your fenders bonking around outside. Okay, so we just did you one good there. Right there, you can grab that both sides so you can get out there to do the, to get to your fenders. And let's see, walk through windshield of course, and you don't have to unsnap like all the other brand boats. This is the only one I've seen so far, Hughescraft has it, and that is where you can just unzip this and open the door and go out instead of having to reach and unsnap it everywhere that it goes. All right, this here's the plug for your onboard charger. You can put that there. And then we've got pretty much, I think that gives us a good look through the whole inside. So we'll go ahead and launch this and then we'll take it out and check everything out on the water. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and do a cold start on the motor here. Turn the ignition on, crank. Okay, fire it up. The steering's really smooth. Back and forth, that's no problem. Okay, let's let it warm up for a minute here. But while we're doing that, let's check these downriggers out, see how they do. First, I'll unclutch them. Okay, so drop them. Oh, I guess I can drop them. Oh, yeah, they work. So down, up, and then just snug it up. Dink. Check number port. Perfect. Looks like they're working good. Perfect. Love those cannons. Okay, so I've seen washdown pumps before, but for some reason this one has more pressure than most. Check that out. I got like a solid boat length. Dang. Woo. So yeah, so is everything down on here? Got there and then flip it off back there. Depressurize it. Very nice. Washdown works good. Downriggers are good. I mean, you know, it's not that old of a boat. Next is we're gonna try that old Terra. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and launch that and we'll go from there and you'll see it because you'll be from the dock. I'll see if I can get it to go. Okay, so I got the uh, high pilot going here. And so we can, we can steer here and run it, speed it up. See there? Turn, turn. You can also lock it on a couple of different ways. You can spot lock it with the uh, anchor button or you always have the uh, directional, which is this little guy right here. And so for example, see I'm headed towards that house. So I can hit this button and it will hold that direction even in the wind the motor will automatically go to that spot oh i told you wrong it's actually the end button now it will go that direction that is facing so we've got the uh good working old terra these things are rad doing it on its own making its own path the other thing too is wind and stuff pushes you off course it'll turn to pull you right back onto your actual course um, not just keep you pointing in the same direction like a compass thing would but it actually will pull you back to your trail or your direction so if the wind pushed you really hard the boat would turn drive right back up and then and then go straight with it so that's pretty cool I'm gonna turn that off though so we can turn so let's see how fast we can go with it. I'll kick on the uh, GPS here and watch it. Looks like we're going right now on setting uh, number seven at, we're going 2.3 miles an hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick this up. Oh, get rid of that. Let's lock in the speed. There we go. Okay, there's number 10. The other thing is, is we don't know how charged these batteries are on here because the boat has been going, but we'll go ahead and see how we're doing here. Yeah, we're going over right now, four miles an hour. There we go, we're cruising along. Okay, slow it down. Okay, and then we'll go ahead. So we're cruising along, we're doing our thing and uh, we can just hit this stow. Now you have to hook this, everybody thinks that even my techie son who's making this video, putting it together for you right now, he didn't even know, it's a trick. So you push the stow button, you go here, it's coming up, doing his thing, right? But then to deploy it, it's a little different. You have to push the button twice. Okay, so now it's stowed and you're ready to roll. And then if I want to deploy it, see, this is what the screen looks like. You can see it. But I push it once, nothing happens. Push it twice, really fast. And then it goes. A little bit of a trick. That's so you don't automatically deploy it like when it's on the trailer or something. Okay. Hit the little prompt button and it'll start moving us around. See, there it goes. Spin the boat right around. Wow, that moves it quick. So there you go. There's the uh, Ulterra operations. Okay, at this point we're running under the Ulterra and now I'm gonna pull it up and we're gonna go run under the main motor and make sure everything works good that way. Oh cool, and now we're ready to run. So I'll go ahead and shift into gear here. Just put it into gear, everything sounds good on the main. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and trim all the way down for the launch. There you go. So that's all the way down for takeoff. And I'm gonna try to hold this while we take off so you can see. There we go. One handed, one on the wheel, one holding you guys up. Okay, a little bit of throttle, 2000 RPMs, 2100 RPMs there. Quiet, smooth. Okay, we're gonna give it another ten or another thousand RPMs up to three. That's great. And one. Okay. We'll probably plane out here in just a second. Yeah, that's already on a plane. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit more up to about four. There we go. Now we're on full speed.
miles an hour. Let's go ahead and see if she's picking up to 51. We're going to pull up to 33 miles an hour. 